welcome here to an all-new edition of Dolphin Dive. Here with you on Wednesdays, you know the Dolphin Dive comes to you every second and fourth Wednesday of each month, diving into the stories of student-athletes, coaches, administration, future Dolphins, and alumni. And we are here today with LaToya Baker. And LaToya, very happy to have you here on the broadcast. The women's basketball team getting the spotlight here for LeMoyne College and the Dolphins appreciate everything that the student athletes are doing on campus and so happy to tell the stories and having the opportunity to tell Latoya's story today. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So for those who don't know, bring me into how you ended up at Lemoyne College and, and share that journey with us. Okay. So um, I started playing basketball when I was in uh, kindergarten. Um I didn't put myself in it. My parents didn't put my um myself in basketball. It was my kindergarten and first grade teacher who thought I should have a way to express myself outside the classroom. So she got me into basketball with her husband, who coached me throughout CYO. And actually, like they were very great people in my life, still to this day, still come to my games. Um, very important people in my life, but um they actually um, got me into a scholarship with Bishop Carney, and that was I was able to um, continue my basketball journey at Bishop Carney and get, have great opportunities there. Um, and I had the opportunity to uh, play for an amazing coach, um, uh, Coach Kevin Shep. Um, um, he's a very, very great coach. He's been coaching at Carney for years, um, and he's had players who went D one across the country and D2, things like that. But he's an amazing coach. And um, honestly, I just looked for his guidance when it came to college. And I had the opportunity to play for the Lakers um, with uh, Coach Perizat. Um, And he got me into contact with Coach Grimes, who recruited me. And it was funny because at first I was thinking like as a normal kid, oh, I want to go D1. Like, I don't want to look at any other school but D1s. Like, that's how I was thinking. Um, but he convinced me to like give it a chance and go on a visit and stuff. So I went on a visit with my mom and grandmother to Lamar College. And I thought it was very nice. And it, it reminded me of my high school, very small. This classroom was small, and I like that. Get to interact with um teachers. So after that, she Coach Castelli, the old coach here, um, offered me a full ride, and I pretty much took it at the spot because I got very emotional because I didn't want my mom to end up paying for college. So that was very important to me, and I love the head coach here at the time, and I love Coach Grimes especially. And so I took the opportunity to come here. And at first I really was skeptical of coming here because I, I didn't know if I would fit in. And everything played out and now I'm here today, so. And for you, LaToya, what, what made you, when you said you were skeptical on whether or not you would fit in, what made you feel that way? Um, Just because it was a different style of basketball than I, I was used to at the time. So my freshman year it was Coach Stelly, um, as head coach, and it was a different type of style of basketball for sure. And I wasn't sure if I would fit in because I wasn't necessarily like a shooter on the team. So I I thought, oh, like I probably couldn't fit in the team. But Coach Stelly made it work for me, and she switched up the offense for me and stuff like that, before I could develop into the player I am today. And I thank her for that. She was an amazing head coach at the time. And um, she just made me feel more welcome than I thought I would. And you talk about Gina Castelli, the, the former coach for LeMoyne College Dolphins women's basketball there for almost a decade. What do you want to to thank her for? If you could look into the camera and she was looking back at you today, what would you want to say to her? Um, I would want to thank her for giving me a, a chance and um telling me to keep going at it like um during my freshman year was a tough freshman year season but usually every freshman season is tough and um I was coming in thinking I I was just like dominate and it's really hard to do that as a freshman so um I, I would want to thank her for just keep pushing me and telling me like to stay a course 
and stuff. So, and during COVID, I remember I was just thinking about like, like what if I don't fit in here? Like, um, am I am I capable of staying here or stuff? But she just kept telling me like, just stay in course. Like this is all gonna work in your favor and stuff like that. And um, I really want to thank her for that because if it wasn't for her. I'd probably end up somewhere else and wouldn't enjoy basketball anymore. But I'm very happy here right now, and I thank you for that. So. You said if you weren't at LeMoyne, you probably would be somewhere somewhere else not enjoying basketball. What has LeMoyne done to keep that passion of, of the sport of basketball alive for you from when you started playing as a little kid to now? Why is LeMoyne a part of, of keeping it fun for you and keeping it exciting? Well, Lamont is like a, a family here. It's really a small family. We all have that many people on our roster. And um, I feel like the head coach here and even the director, the sport director, every everyone here like just knows everyone's names. They they're checking on you and stuff like that. Um it's it's fun playing basketball here. That practices are fun. Um we have serious moments, yes, but we enjoy practicing, coming here every day, and we're just a big, happy family, really. And, and LaToya here in this edition of Dolphin Dive with LaToya Baker from the women's basketball team at LeMoyne College. As you had stated with Gina and coming in and the connection that you built with her and then wondering in the COVID season, you know, do I still fit in? Am I going to fit in here? You have a very unique experience of coming in recruited by one coach then having the world stop and then having a coach be different after that, albeit that Gina and Mary Grimes know each other and Mary coached under Gina at LeMoyne. But how did you deal with that dynamic of having Gina as your head coach going through a COVID year where the season's canceled and then coming out of that year with a new head coach? Well, to be honest, the only reason why I came here really is because of Mary Grimes. Uh, she really pushed for me to come here I really liked her attitude. I really liked um her dynamic, everything. I just loved her. And um when I found out that she was leaving to become assistant coach somewhere else, um, I was very disappointed because I really wanted to be able to work with her and um her for be my coach. But unfortunately that didn't happen. But at the same time, um Coach Sully um was a great head coach that wouldn't change anything that happened. Um uh, I thought during COVID, um, Coach Sully was just saying that I would love, like, she told us, the whole team, that she was going to be tired, and, um, and we was devastated. We thought, oh, my God, like, what are we going to do? Like, what if we don't want, like, the new head of coach and stuff? But Coach Sully told me, trust me, Toy, you would like this head coach. Like, <laughs> trust me, you will. <laughs> and um, there was definitely a process of um, choosing a head coach, and I think the um, director, um, chose a great head coach, Mary Grimes, because uh, she's a great head coach. I mean, she's winning through the first two years of her se uh, career as a head coach, and I think that's amazing. And um, I just have a great relationship with um, Coach Grimes. Um, she makes sure that we're all stable mentally and physically, and I think she she's doing a great job for her first two seasons. And you you spoke about you had Mary Grimes, you lost Mary Grimes. And then when you hear from Gina, Hey, I'm, I'm going to be retiring. And there's the emotion of, Oh my gosh, now I got to lose somebody else. And then she says, she, it's kind of like a movie with saying like, okay, I'm leaving, but don't worry, Latoya, you're going to like who I'm bringing in. When you found out that Mary Grimes was coming back and as the head coach, bring me into that moment for you, how you found out and the emotions that you had in that moment. Um, when I found out that uh, Coach Grimes would become the head coach, I was actually very excited. Um, the first person I told was my mother because she really loved Mary Grimes and my grandmother did too on a visit. So they were very excited. They were like jumping up and down for some reason. I don't really know, but um, <laughs> <laughs> um, we were very excited as a family because we really, we chose the school because of uh coach Grimes and um it was great that she was coming back it was great to have an opportunity to play for her um coming into the season I, I just knew that she was about winning 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 and about her place too and it was it's kind of hard to have both of those things as a head coach 
and she brought both of those to the table. And um, she really looked for us, our input put into the game when it came, came to plays and stuff like that. Like she looked at each player and was like, what, what is best for this player? And I really love that about her. I love their offense. I love her style of play. She's a great head coach. She has great ideas for anything. And um, I just was really excited coming into the season, for sure. You said that Mary is the bonding of two difficult things to have both, a winning coach and a coach that's about their players. How do you see her bring that all together? Um, she just, She's just Mary, like Mary Grimes. Like, that's just who she is. She brings it both to the table because that's who she is. That's who she always been about. Um, she really cares about our well-being and our positive environment around us. Um, she doesn't let anything stop that from happening. Um, if we lose a game, she doesn't put it on us. She put it on herself because she she knows that she can she could have done better, and obviously we could have done better too. But um, she she never yells as a head coach either, which is kind of amazing. But you know she's serious about certain things too, um, and we take her seriously. And I think that's why we we win most of our games is that we um respect Coach Grimes and respect her decisions. And we know that she will make the right decision at the end of the day because she cares about us and she cares about empower, empowering us as young women. And um, I think that's a great, great thing as a head coach to have. Latoya, for you, when when you talk about, you know, Coach Grimes caring about not just your physical health, but your mental health as well and making that paramount, how how have you really keyed in on that in your life? making sure that the mental health side of it on and off the court is taken care of because not just in basketball, but in anything, if your mental isn't there, you're not there. Yeah, definitely being a student athlete is hard um, with having school athletics and um, stuff outside of school and stuff like that. Um, it's definitely hard, harder than it looks. And um, you have to have a great, not a great mental, but like your mental still has to be there. And um, honestly, I just really lock in on focusing my inner self and um, focusing on what makes me happy and what makes me calm down and stuff like that. Um, because if I'm not mentally there, I'm not performing well when it comes to basketball. I'm not performing well when it comes to school, um, performing well, being a friend, family member, anything like that. So um, I really just, I've been doing yoga recently. Um, it really helps with um, my inner self. And um, I've been trying to do it um, starting off with every Friday and I'm going to increase the days in the week. And it really helps calm me down and center myself, reset, have a reset button. button. And I just think about all the things I've done this week and what positive things I've done and what negative things that have happened this week. And I just reflect on those things. So, And, you know, for you to to have that, like you said, yoga that you've gotten into, what made you kind of interested in saying, you know what, let me try this avenue. Let me give this a shot. What what got you to, to be open to that? Um, honestly, it's been my roommate, Lexi Gruss. Um, she, I've been seeing her do yoga for like a couple of years now. And I'm like, okay she seems like she's at peace with herself. Let me try this. <laughs> so um, I really got into it with her. And um, I just been seeing her doing it with the yoga mat. And I was like, I talked to her about it and asked her like, what are the benefits for it? And the benefits sounded really great. And um, I wanted to give it a try. And uh, even some um, random days we do yoga here at Le Moine um, for um, Mary Grimes just says, okay, it's a yoga day. We're going to do some yoga stretches and stuff like that to relax. And I appreciate that so much because it, it does relax me. And I like did that. So I decided to do it at home more. So, yeah. yeah Coming here from Latoya Baker, Lemoyne College Dolphins women's basketball team. Before we get into something called Rapid Fire, where we get to have some fun, go back and forth off the court. I want to go back onto the court. First game of the season that you had, albeit an exhibition game going up against Syracuse, going to the Dome, Division Two for LeMoyne, Division One for Syracuse. In that game, every one of the four quarters, you stayed in it. 
and 73 to 30 is how the game ended. Syracuse at the time we're talking now, they've only had two wins this season that have come from three points or less. A game at Yale and in the exhibition game against LeMoyne. In that game, you were eight of 18, second leading scorer with 16 points. What did it mean to you to go to the Dome and play that game and to play a Division I team to the caliber that LeMoyne did in that matchup? Well, coming into the game, um, I was telling um, our players that we're not coming here to lose. Like, I don't care if they're D1. I don't care if they're, like, top in the country. I don't care. Um, we came here to win. And coming into the Dome is a very great opportunity for us um, to play there. And we're not going to embarrass ourselves and come out there sloppy and stuff like that. Just because we're young, just because we're a Division two school, it doesn't mean anything. Um, the NN10 is a great conference for um division two i'm pretty sure they, they can beat some um division one teams so we wasn't thinking we we're gonna lose we could play our game that's all we cared about we didn't care about the fans anything like that we just came there to play our game and um i think that showed throughout the game um i think we came out there fearless um we didn't care who they were um and i think we stayed of course and we trusted um coach grimes uh plan throughout the whole game and honestly i think we could have won that game um, but unfortunately, like things happen and injuries happen, stuff like that. But um, I, I was very proud of how we played, and we pretty much showed the conference like you should be afraid of Lemoyne women's basketball. Like we came here to play, we came to play the season, and I think we did that. So pretty proud of us. I love that you should be afraid of Lemoyne women's basketball. I'm gonna hold on to that statement. Uh, final note before rapid fire. Where from the moment you walked into Lemoyne to where you are right now, where have you excelled as a player? Where have you seen that growth? And off the court, I know you talked about yoga and some things you do for yourself, but who was Latoya coming into Lemoyne? Who is Latoya now? Um, I feel like Latoya coming into the season, uh, freshman year, was uh, just someone who cared about her own um, being and cared about her own success. And now I, I all I do is care about my teammates' um, success. I don't know if like people watch the games that much, but um, really when I score, I don't really get that hype. But when my teammates score a good, great assist or something like that, I get so hyped because I'm just happy for them because I know what it's like to not be successful at the moment and just rock it from there. So um, I'm very excited when my teammates score and stuff like that. I appreciate that. That selflessness obviously uh, says a lot about you, not just on the court, but off the court. Latoya Baker in this edition of Dolphin Dive. We're going to play rapid fire. You can ask me anything in the world and I can do the same. We're going to have three apiece back and forth. You're going to start with your first question for me. It can be about literally anything. We have to answer it. So whenever you're ready, go ahead. Okay. Um, what's your favorite sport to cover? That's a tough that's tough for me. Uh, I love, I played basketball my whole life. I have a passion for, for a lot of, I mean, really every sport has its own place for me, but I guess I would say the sport where I can close my eyes, hear sneakers. And I always joke around with people that I can literally hear your sneakers and know what defense you're in. I'd probably have to say basketball. Nice. Yeah. Basketball is special to me. All right, Latoya, let's see here. You're going to come out to a song at Ted Grant Court, each player is going to get their own song. Tell me the song you come out to. Oh, that's a tough one. Um, I don't know why, but this is my favorite song. Uh, it's kind of a sad song, but "Stay" by Rihanna. I really like the song. It doesn't really correlate with anything, but I'm just going to stay stick with that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, there's songs that just mean something to you. You don't know why, but they just hit different. Yeah, yeah. All right, I got it. I know that song. What's your second one for me? Uh, let's see. What's your favorite movie? That is a very tough question. <laughs> You're asking somebody who enjoys screenwriting and is looking to do that in my present and future. I love movies. So I would say I love comedy. So if I had to pick a comedy, it would be Liar Liar with Jim Carrey or Wedding Crashers. And if I had, I'm a big Marvel fan. So if I had to pick one of the Marvel movies, it would probably be, oh man. I'd probably, that's really tough. I'd probably say 
Spider-Man No Way Home for the three Spider-Men. Or I would say, because I try to not get hyped for a movie. I try to like be mellow because I don't want it to let me down. But I will tell you this. I don't know if you've seen it, but I, I was a two years before the first Black Panther came out. I was a fan of the character. Big fan of Chadwick Boseman. Loved him in the movie Draft Day, which if you haven't seen, you should watch it. Wakanda, Wakanda Forever made me cry four times. Yeah. So, so uh, some I'm not going to give it away to anybody, but the ending of the movie was something I predicted in a way. But Angela Bassett in that movie, I think she should win every award. It, like hands down, yeah. there's not an award she should not win in that movie. So, uh, I would probably say if I had to pick Marvel, it would be No Way Home for Spider Man or Wakanda Forever for Black Panther. Great movies. Yes. So did you now I gotta ask you, did you get emotional in Wakanda Forever? Don't make me be the only person on screen. Yes, yes. I got <laughs> I got emotional, very emotional movie. Okay. And so did you do you have a favorite character? This is not my question, but I'm just asking. Yeah. Um favorite <laughs> character. I like them all. But um I forgot the character name, but probably the one who invented the whole machine. Uh I forgot her name. The one, oh, the one that uh, Riri Williams, who plays Ironheart. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You pick her. Okay. So my question for you, my second question for you, Latoya. Huh. If you could live anywhere in the world for a year, where would you live and why? That's a tough one. Um, probably. Probably like L.A. Just because it's like very popular right now, and um, it's, it's a whole bunch of opportunities, a uh, bunch of celebrities and stuff like that. So probably there, um, beautiful place to live, probably. So yeah. I would just suggest you ride a bike because gas is like nine bucks. <laughs> yeah, I know it's very expensive. A year you live there, that's why it's only be a year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just for a year. Okay, what's your last one for me? Um. If you can play um basketball right now, what dream school would you play for right now? That's tough. So I'm not saying this because we're on screen. I feel like I didn't go I didn't go to Lemoyne, but I feel like part of the family. And I can thank everybody at Lemoyne for making me feel this way because the community's been awesome. So I would say if I was playing D2. I would want to stay home and play at Lemoyne. My dad went to school at Lemoyne. So I would definitely want to suit up as long as I could wear number 21, Nate Champion. You heard that. So, and if I was playing Division One, I, I, my dream was always to go to Syracuse. So I think I would probably stay in Central New York either way. Nice. All right. My, my last one for you, Latoya. Hmm. Okay. You are tasked with doing one of these three things and you have to you have to choose one of them and go on tour are you touring as a singer as a stand-up comedian or as a motivational speaker and why hmm. i know my teammates are gonna hate this answer but uh, <laughs> probably a singer i think i have the best voice um on the team even though it's not that great um but i feel like I could be like a singer that's like funny. I don't know. But um the song I told you about stay, I know every lyric. Um I sing it very well for a non-singer. So I'd be a singer and sing that song a couple of times. All right, that Latoya Baker on tour with Rihanna. That wouldn't be too bad. Yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Latoya, well, as always, I definitely appreciate bringing the Dolphin Dive stories exclusively here on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. Very much appreciate the fact that you took the time to be here with us today and to tell your story. And I look forward to continuing to tell that story as we move forward here on Wake Up Call and in general in the community. So thank you for that. Thanks for having me.